Hello folks and welcome to an inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. This time we have the first of the Anderson Pens ink collection. They had a bunch of inks. I want to say there's seven. Let me see. One, two, uh, three, six, seven. Yes. Seven inks. These are all made for them by uh, Scribal Workshops, which you might remember had a line of inks. Eh, several lines of inks actually a while ago. I wasn't admittedly a huge fan of those inks. Uh, but uh, the Andersons had those reformulated. They all ran a bit dry, I think, was the deal. And uh, this one you might remember as being damselfish. A lot of people love the damselfish washable blue. Well, now it is Fox River Blues. Uh, this is sort of the medium blue. I've got, uh, here's a bunch of swatches of the various ink colors. You can see uh, Robin's egg is kind of there, but this one's sort of the medium blue. You've got a really dark blue and uh, denim, a light blue in Robin's egg, and this one is Fox Rivers. I'm glad there's three blues, because, man, I love blue inks. So, how about this blue ink? Well, this is a pretty good blue ink, really. It still tends to be a bit on the dry side, but for me, Damselfish and most of the rest of Scribal Workshops were kind of unusable. They would uh, be okay when you first inked them up, and then a day or so later, it would be like writing with... Um, I don't know, like sand in your nib or something. They just didn't do it for me at all. But these are quite a lot better. They're still a little bit reluctant, slightly on the dry side. But I have this in two pens, neither of which are particularly wet. One is a Lamy Nex, the fine nib. The other is this Artista Crystal from uh, Monteverde. Now it's got, as you can see, a Franklin Kristoff nib in there. I think I damaged my nib. I dropped it on the nib with the Monteverde nib. So that might be one that I have to deal with at some point in the future. But... Nonetheless, neither of those are known for being particularly wet nibs. They're both a little bit, well, I mean, they're medium, but dry medium, I think. So um, this ink, I would advise you to put it in a wet nib. It's going to be great there, I think. I've also, well, the wettest one I have, I think, is this uh, uh, Custom 74, but it's got another one. It's got the uh, uh, Green Bay Green, and uh, so I haven't been able to try it. But um, this one flowed pretty well. It doesn't uh, bleed through paper, even copy paper. It does show through because it's a darkish blue, but it doesn't bleed. Uh, you can see here if I can let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. Uh, a little jittery, but nonetheless, it does shade here. Not a whole lot of shading. Oh, I didn't actually fill that in when I wrote this. How about that? Well, here we go. Shading and sheen. Uh, no shading. Uh, on copy paper. Mm, sheen. Uh, what do you think? Sheen. Nah, no sheen. No sheen. Oh, she knows. All right. Now cat's going to jump up here, I'm sure. All right, so um, some shading here in Rhodia. Not a lot of shading elsewhere. You'll see it every once in a while, but not a whole lot. Because it's a little bit dry, and the pens I was using were like a dryish medium. So no shading. Now, you might have shading if you use a big nib. I don't know. I don't have one of those handy to test it with, unfortunately. Uh, but do give that a shot. I really like this blue, um, but it really needs that wet nib, like I said there. So do that, and you'll be good. No bleed, no feather, no spread. Um, bleeding, you know, that kind of has to do a lot of times with how big the nib is. This one's pretty fine, but nothing really coming through. Uh, as you can see in the swatch here, it is a gorgeous blue. Really kind of that dark medium blue that I'm a big fan of. Here it is with some other blues that I have inked up. Yeah, i got a lot of blues <laughs> uh, in pens right now. So it's right there with the Robin's A. You can see that one's kind of light. Schaefer Turquoise actually is coming up to be... Under this uh, this camera, and I've said before that this you know, iPhone just doesn't really pick up turquoise well. The turquoise is a bit more turquoise than Robin's Egg, although Robin's Egg is kind of light. Uh, Serenity Blue, a lot of purple showing in that one, and uh, Noodler's Texas Blue Bonnet, which is a really dark, rich blue. It's uh, limited from John Gould's in Houston. All right, so let's see how this does with the water drop test before my phone runs out of memory on me. All right, here, have some water. Sploosh. All right. So I'll let that kind of soak in a little bit. Now the chromatography for, the, for this one was really interesting. I'm not sure what to make of it, so I'm looking forward to this water drop test. All right, that seems like long enough. I'll blot it away carefully so I didn't go everywhere as I've done in the past. I can learn from mistakes. Oh, weird. All right, well it seems to have stuck around, and yet there's a lot of it that came off. This is a really uh, like well-saturated ink. You can't see that it came through this, but like I've said, this particular uh, number 14 pad from Rhodia is kind of weak sauce. Uh, and it also showed through there. That's weird. I never had that on dot pads. I'm switching back to dot pads after this one. I mean, I got some backlog that I'll have to do on this paper, but nonetheless, back. So, uh, I don't know. It's kind of weird. You got a weird thing going on here uh, where it's sort of like made it feather and soak in, but definitely still there. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of it, really. It's It looks like, to me, 
especially here, and I'll wipe it with a damp towel. It does come up a bit, and you get a lot of blue on the on the paper towel, but it also still sticks around, which is, I don't know, kind of, I guess, what I was sort of expecting, because here's the chromatography. It looks like this. Um, the splotch I started out with was here-ish, and then, I don't know, it kind of went up a bit, but not nearly as much. Oh, good, my computer's finally turning on. Not nearly as much as I expected. I mean, other colors, you know, they'll spread out and they'll move up the page and that sort of thing. This one, not so much. Just kind of mostly stayed where it was, although some escaped. So, there you go. That's what this does then. Um, I would say this feathering and stuff, it's probably not due to the ink. It's probably due to this uh, Rhodia paper that I was using there. So, you know, that's that. All right, so go to Anderson Pens, pick up some of this uh, excellent Fox River Blue. Comes in little vials like this. Anderson Pens does do a three mil sample, which is a pretty good sized sample. Um, I've had this in several pens and I've still got, yeah, I don't know, about that much. A little less than what it's showing there because it clings to the walls a little bit. Still got quite a bit left, but three mils, 50% uh, more than the two mil samples you get elsewhere. So do uh, check those out. Also, check me out on patreon.com slash inkdependence and www.inkdependence.com. Uh, to see how you can help with the ink dependence effort. If you appreciate what I'm doing here, consider being a patron at a dollar or so a month. That would be super. All right, thanks, folks. See you around.